Welcome to Electron Online. In this set of, set of videos, we're going to talk about polar coordinates. Now, polar coordinates are typically a, a um, topic that gets covered in pre-calculus courses. And polar coordinates are very important as we move on to mathematics because we use them in physics, we use them in all kinds of science, we use them in calculus and so forth. So we need to become familiar with how to use polar coordinates. It turns out that later on we'll also talk about cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates, but here's a good start to move away from something we call the x-y axis and using the Cartesian coordinate system. In the Cartesian coordinate system, we have the x-y axis which represents a plane. And a plane, on a plane you can have an infinite number of dots, an infinite number of points on a plane. I should call them points probably. We use the the variable p to indicate a point on the plane. And the point will then have what we call an x and a y coordinate. The x coordinate tells you how far away we are from the origin in the x direction, and the y coordinate tells you how far away you are from the coordinate in the y direction. So that means that in an infinite plane, you can draw an infinite number of points all with a x and y coordinate, which gives you the exact indication of where that point is at. Well, it turns out we can do the same, but we can do it in polar coordinates. So here we still have the x-y axis, but that very same spot, which has coordinates 2 and 2 for x and y, can also have coordinates r and theta. So r and theta are the two variables in polar coordinates. r represents the distance from the point to the origin, and theta represents the angle from the positive x-axis to the line that connects the origin to the point the angle in between. And typically that angle is indicated in radians and not in degrees. So the very same point can be found by saying it's a distance of 2 times the square root of 2 away from the origin and with an angle of 45 degrees or pi over 4 above the x-axis. So that means that those are the exact same points on, in the plane but this is indicated in Cartesian coordinates and this is indicated in polar coordinates which also means we're supposed to be able to go back and forth between Cartesian and polar coordinates. Let's say we're given the, the points x, y is equal to 2, 2. Then how do we find the appropriate polar coordinates? How do we find r, the distance from the origin to the point, and how do we find the angle? Well, it turns out that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, which of course is the distance formula. And so since we have x and y, we can say, well, this is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared. And I think I made this line a little bit too long. And so this is equal to the square root of 4 plus 4, which is equal to the square root of 2 times 4, which is equal to 2 times the square root of 2. And notice that was the coordinate in the r theta coordinate system, in the polar coordinate system. So that's the distance 2 times the square root of 2, which is about... 2.8. Now, how do we find the angle? Well, theta can be found by taking the arctangent of the opposite side, which is y, divided by the adjacent side, which is x. So this would be the arctangent of 2 divided by 2, which is equal to the arctangent of 1. And of course, the arctangent of 1 is 45 degrees, and in radians, 45 degrees is pi divided by 4. So this is pi divided by 4. And so that's how we convert from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates by using these relationships. Well, how do you find the x and y coordinates once you're given the polar coordinates? What if you're given a point with a distance of 2 times the square root of 2 from the origin and an angle of pi over 4 away from the positive x-axis? How do you find the corresponding x and y coordinates on that? Well, it turns out that x can be defined as r, which then becomes the hypotenuse of this triangle. If you think about it, this is kind of like a triangle, right? If you draw a line like this, we see a triangle like that, and then the x coordinate to that point would be the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle theta. So in this case, that would be r times the cosine of theta. And to find the y coordinate, y, that would be equal to r times the sine of theta. So in this case, that would be equal to 2 times the square root of 2 times the cosine of pi over 4. And if we multiply it, if we take the cosine of pi over 4, that would be the square root of 2 over 2. So this is equal to 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 over 2. And notice that this is equal to 2, which is what we would expect to find. That would be the x-coordinate. And we do the exact same thing for the y-coordinate. So y 
is equal to r, which is 2 times the square root of 2 times the sine of pi over 4. And of course, the sine of pi over 4 and the cosine of pi over 4 is the same number. So this would be equal to 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 over 2. And that would be also equal to the number 2. So you can see that you can go back and forth from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates and from polar coordinates back to Cartesian coordinates. So you can go back and forth and the definitions are that r is equal to this and theta is equal to that. And if you want to go then back from polar to Cartesian, you know that x is equal to this and y is equal to that. And that is the best way to define what polar coordinates are. Now, there's all kinds of other things we need to know and learn about polar coordinates, but when you get this already down, you understand this part, you're a long ways in understanding polar coordinates. So let me show you a few more things, and then, of course, I'll show you lots of examples of how to use polar coordinates, and those are coming up.